is Krypton Factor P901 stroke 22, take one. Edited. Good evening. We're just five runs away from finding our super person of 1978 because this is the final of the Krypton Factor. Our four contestants have battled their way through heats and semi-finals to reach this final stage. And this is what it's all about. That silver trophy will be presented to the contestant who achieves the highest Krypton Factor at the end of this program in about half an hour's time. And we've brought back last year's winner, Harry Evans, to make that presentation. So let's get this 1978 final underway, starting as we always do with the mental agility test. And the test for this final is initial numbers reversed. And now the explanation contestants, and listen very hard because this is the final and therefore this is the hardest test so far. In a few moments through your headphones, you'll hear a series of numbers. What you have to do is in your minds, reverse that series of numbers and then give me the initial letter of those numbers. Quick example, if you got the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, in your mind you would reverse that to 4, 3, 2, 1, and then give me the first letter of those numbers. F for 4, T for 3, T for 2, O for 1. I only want the letters, in that case your answer would be F, T, T, O. If you've got that, put your headphones on now please. You know by now how important total concentration is in this round, particularly for this mental agility round in the final. We start with your series, Ken Wilmshurst. Four, seven, one, eight. E, O, S, F. Correct. Now Terry Carroll. Seven, two, eight, three. T, E, T S. Also correct. Robert Taylor. Eight three six one. O S. No, it's gone. Well, it should have finished T E. You're eliminated, Robert Taylor. We move on to Father David Drake Brockman. Five two six four. F, S, T, F. That is correct. Let's now make it a lot more difficult for you by jumping now to seven numbers, starting with you, Ken Wilmshurst. Two, four, eight, three, five, one, seven. S, O, F, T, E, F, T. Absolutely right. Now, Terry Carroll. Six, one, eight, four, seven, three, five. F, T, S, F, E, O, S. Also correct. Now, David Drake Brockman. Four, six, eight, 
F O T T E S F. Absolutely right. So a tremendous battle going on here as the, all three of you qualify to go on for eight numbers, starting again with Ken Wilmshurst. Two, eight, one, six, three, five, seven, four. F, S, F, T, S, O, E, T. That is right. On to Terry Carroll. Four, eight, three, five, one, six, four, seven. S, F, S, O, F, T, E, F. Also right. Now David Drake Brockman. Eight, four, seven, one, six, five, three, one. O T F S O S T E. No, wrong on the last but one letter. It should have ended F E, not T E, as you said. So you're now eliminated, David Drake Brockman. Two of you left in it as we go to nine numbers. Ken Wilmshurst. Three, six, four, seven, five, one, eight, four, two. T F E O F S. I lost it. F, F E T. Almost there, but not quite. Again, the last but one. It should have ended S T, not E T. We move on to Terry Carroll. Seven four six one eight three two five nine. N, F, T, T, E, O, S, F, S. Absolutely right. Which means that Terry Carroll, of course, wins that round outright and he starts the contest in the best possible way with ten points. In second place was Ken Wilmshurst, six points for him. Then in third place, Father David Drake Brockman, who gets four points. And fourth, Robert Taylor, two points. But the early leader from Bradford with ten points is Terry Carroll. <laughs> and straight on to the physical ability test. And you remember for the semi-final, we added two obstacles to the assault course. Well, for the final, we added yet another, a 20-foot high scramble net, making 20 obstacles in all. Now, before the start, injury doubts hung over two of our contestants. Ken Wilmshurst, the ex-Melbourne Olympic long jumper, damaged a hamstring in a competition a few days earlier. And Father David Drake Brockman was still suffering from the back injury he sustained during practice for the semi-final. So it was a wide open race. Let's see what happened as we go now to the start and join the Army's Captain Don Glynn. Competitors, take your marks. And it's Ken Wilmshurst, the oldest man in the race, age 47, who starts first. And immediately behind him, Father David Drake Brockman, age 44, just three seconds behind. Both these men with injury problems. Ken Wilmshurst with that left leg, though he's going very well at the moment. David Drake Brockman with his back trouble. But now it's Robert Taylor, age 34, away. He was 14 seconds behind. And now Terry Carroll, the youngest man, age 29, who was 19 seconds behind. Ken Wilmshurst is underway. He's got the toughest job, all that ground to make up. But in the lead, it's Ken Wilmshurst in second place. Going over the rope swing there is Robert Taylor, the gardener from London. There's Ken Wilmshurst in the lead, that left leg at the moment standing up to it. Pulled a hamstring in a veterans race at the weekend, but going quite well at the moment in the lead. Terry Carroll emerging just ahead of Father David Drake Brockman and going over that six-foot high wall. Quite a difficult one to get over. But on goes Ken Wilmshurst. Look at the agony in that face as he goes over the monkey swing. He's still quite a long way in the lead. Robert Taylor is in second place. There's Robert Taylor going over the logs and into the monkey swing himself. Large, he goes over two at a time there. So he'll certainly make up a little bit of ground there. He's made up some ground on Ken Wilmshurst, but Ken Wilmshurst, it is in the lead. Terry Carroll there. Now the 
new obstacle specially put in for the final, the scramble net. It's Ken Wilmshurst going up over the top and just coming up to it in second place is Robert Taylor, Terry Carroll in third place. There goes Ken Wilmshurst nicely over the top. Tied up a bit coming down though, Robert Taylor now going over the top. How you get over the top depends on what sort of ground you make up. And that's the way the army instructs you to go over, ahead over heels, and he'll certainly make up a little bit of ground there. But Ken Wilmshurst in the lead and looking as though he's going to win this assault course as he goes into the last obstacle now. Up to that rope bridge, swinging. It's very windy, it's very wet here up in the Lancashire Moor, so that's going to be an added problem going across that rope bridge. Robert Taylor making up ground very fast on the rope bridge, trying hard, a last desperate uh, attempt to catch Ken Wilmshurst. They're neck and neck, it's a tremendous run by Robert Taylor. He's one step ahead now as he goes onto the platform. What a tremendous last obstacle this is for Robert Taylor. Down he goes, he snatches it at the end there. A splendid finish there by Robert Taylor. He paced that very well indeed. Now Ken Wilmshurst in some trouble. Is that leg giving him trouble, I wonder, as he drops down just in second place? Terry Carroll came through very fast and finishes in third place, leaving Father David Drake Brockman in fourth place. Well, a very brave effort from Father David Drake Brockman. His back, in fact, did give out in the latter stages of the race, but it was sporting of him uh, to have even started in the first place. He does, of course, have the satisfaction of knowing that he did complete uh, the course in the heat and had a good race there, but no doubt about the winner. That finishing burst gave the maximum 10 points to Robert Taylor for first place. In second place was Ken Wilmshurst, who gets six points. A very close third, Terry Carroll, four points. And fourth, David Drake Brockman, who gets two points. And so, the leader at the end of two rounds in what is now a very close contest indeed, with 14 points from Bradford, still Terry Carroll. <laughs> and so, the battle really on as we move on now to the third round, Intelligence. And right away, I ask the contestants to step down behind the benches. There you'll see that each of you has five pieces of a dice. What you have to do is to assemble those pieces to form a complete dice, an easy explanation. It's a difficult test, I can assure you. Indeed, I'll give you one clue. The opposite sides on the dice should add up to seven. If your target time is two minutes, will you start now? Well, the first task is to sort out which dots belong to which numbers and then you can set about assembling with some confidence. But if you rely on just trying to piece a few shapes together in the hope that you'll suddenly find the way, you'll almost certainly come unstuck. So Terry Carroll trying to sort the dots out. And Ken Wilmshurst, the company director. That looks like the top part of the five, though some adjustment at the bottom is necessary there. David Drake Brockman has the one facing us, which obviously needs to be central, just like that. And Ken Wilmshurst making progress fast. He's got the five in shape, and that's a blank piece going in, so he may well have finished. Five, three, two, one on the top, six towards him. He has finished. Ken Wilmshurst wins this round. Sigh of relief from him. But Robert Taylor not with any set pattern so far. And nor has Terry Carroll. I don't think they've sorted out where the dots go, but David Drake Brockman has. It looks like he may have finished. One there, two, three on the top, six and five at the side. Yes, he finishes second. Father David Drake Brockman from Huddersfield. The two men with no real clue and the buzzer coming up. And so, two of you beaten by the time. It was a very difficult test, as indeed it should be for the final. And Ken Wilmshurst did very well indeed to finish as quickly as he did, and he gets the full ten points. In second place was David Drake Brockman, and he gets six points. And then Terry Carroll and Robert Taylor failing to finish, but they both had two pieces in place. They share third place with four points each, so we feed those scores into the master scoreboard. And there you can see closer all the time, but we've now got a new leader from Oxshott in Surrey with 22 points. It's Ken Wilmshurst.
So a very open contest indeed with just two rounds to go. Next it's observation, questions on a clip of film followed by that identity parade. So contestants, would you turn now and face your screens, look at everything hard, faces, background, listen hard too. to see you. Oh, my old friend, how <laughs> capital, how capital. Yes. Oh, I haven't clapped eyes on you since, oh, that strange affair of the, uh, the decapitated clergyman. Yes, yes. I still think you were a trifle lucky to find that cake knife up the chimney like that. Lucky? With me, it's the exercise of the little grey cells. Luck, I leave to the others. <laughs> yes, I've forgotten your opinion about yourself. Oh, yeah. Might one ask, what, what are you doing here? I'm only vacance. Shortly, I'm going up the Nile on the steamer. <laughs> and you? The same, oddly enough. Oh. Doctor, what about the time of death? Well, she has been dead at least six hours. No longer than eight. That puts it between midnight and 2 a.m. Which is extraordinary. Why is that? Because it means quite simply that Mademoiselle Jacqueline could not have done it. You told me yourself, mon colonel, that Madame Doyle left the observation yes. saloon a little before 11.45 to go to bed. And from then on, Jackie was in view either of Mademoiselle Rosalie and Monsieur Doyle or of Monsieur Sir Ferguson Doyle. and Mademoiselle Bowers, yes. who injected her with morphia and stayed with her in her cabin all night. Then Simon Doyle is also eliminated by reason of his broken leg. I don't suppose he could have walked very far with that wound. Not one step, I assure you. Excellent. Let's hope the process of elimination continues as smoothly. A clip there from the film Death on the Nile. Your three questions each, starting with you, Ken Wilmshurst, an either-or question. How many people were dancing at the beginning of the clip? Was it two or four? Four, <coughs> and then two went off. No, it was two at the beginning. No points there. A visual question. As we moved along the row of people sitting down, what was the first man doing? Beginning of the film... He was, yes. no answer smoking. coming, he was, sorry? Smoking. Rolling a cigarette, rolling a cigarette. Well, you just got there in yes. the nick of time, so it's two points for that. He was indeed rolling a, a cigarette. Dialogue question, when was the last time the two gentlemen met? At the mysterious case of the decapitated priest. Correct. Two more points, so you finish there on four. Terry Carroll, how many women were sitting in the row watching the dancing? Three or four? Three. No, it was four. No points there. Again, in that row of people sitting down, what was the second lady doing? Drinking a brandy or something. Right. Drinking will be good enough. Two points. What clue did Poirot find to solve the affair of the decapitated clergyman? I haven't the foggiest. It was a cake knife up the chimney. Yeah. Oh. So you finish on two. Robert Taylor, how many people were dancing on the second occasion that we saw the dance floor? Two or four? Two. Correct. Two points. When Poirot shook hands with Colonel Reese, played by David Niven, what was in Poirot's left hand? A cigar. There were two things in his left hand. I will give you that clue. You're right with one of them. That's one point. I want the other one. A glass. No white gloves, but you get one point for that. Where did Madame Doyle leave a little before 11.45? The observation saloon. Correct, two points. And finally to Father David Drake Brockman, which woman did Poirot specifically say couldn't have done it? Mademoiselle Jacqueline or Mademoiselle Doyle? Mademoiselle Jacqueline. Correct, two points. Again in that row of people sitting down, what was the last lady doing? She was looking through a lorgnette. I'll accept that. Two points. 
Who injected the morphia and stayed in her cabin all night? Uh, Madame Doyle. No, that is wrong. It was Mademoiselle Bowers, so you stay on four points. But now we move on to the identity parade. They've always been difficult. Tonight being the final is the most difficult yet. You remember at the very beginning of the film, the row of people sitting down, then came a waiter walking across the dance floor, tray in hand, a glass, one glass on that tray. He had a fez on his head. He had a white robe. We have nine waiters, each with a fez and a white robe. One of them was the waiter in that film. The question for our contestants and for four points, which one? Just to remind you, it was in the early stages of the film. We saw the row of people sitting, then the waiter walked across the dance floor with one drink on a tray, and that waiter is in this lineup, one of the nine. And we are coming to the moment where you contestants must make your decision. You've got indicator panels in the armrest on your chair. When I give you the word, will you press the number that corresponds with the waiter in this lineup, the one you think was in that film. Are you all ready? Will you press the number now? All selections have been made. Let us check them out. Ken Wilmshurst has selected number six. Would number six step forward, please? Terry Carroll has gone for number three. Would number three step forward, please? Robert Taylor has selected number eight. Would he step forward, please? And David Drake Brockman has chosen number seven. Would he step forward, please? So they've all made a different choice. Was any one of them right? That we shall find out now, as I ask the waiter who was in that film to make himself known to us now, please. So they're all wrong. It was, in fact, number one actor Neville Rofela. So none of the contestants pick up the extra four points. Let's quickly feed in the totals for that round to the master scoreboard because there's just one round to go and it's still very close indeed, but still the leader with 26 points, Ken Wilmshurst. <laughs> well, let's not waste uh, any time at all because just one round to go before we find our super person for 1978. It's general knowledge. Anyone can still win. Lots of points available. Two and a half minutes to go, starting now. Which London livery company was formed from the textile dealers? The answer was the Mercers. In which of Johnny Mercer's songs does he write of My Huckleberry Friend? <coughs> Terry Carroll. Moon River. Correct, two points. Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon. Who was the second? <coughs> Robert Taylor. Buzz Aldrin. Correct, two points. Whose pen name was Boz? <coughs> Ken Wilmshurst. Charles Dickens. Correct, two points. Robert Charles is a professional player of which sport? <coughs> Terry Carroll. Golf. Correct. What is the habitat of a gopher? <coughs> Ken Wilmshurst. A hole in the ground in the desert. Uh, it's a burrow. A burrow will take that yes. two points. Which swinging character was created by Edgar Rice Burroughs? <coughs> David Drake Brockman. Tarzan. Correct, two points. Which famous ape died on June the 8th? <coughs> Interrupted by Robert Taylor. Guy. Guy the gorilla, correct, two points. What are guys, marlines and <coughs> painters? Terry Carroll. Ropes on yachts. Correct, two points. Who can claim the privilege of being hanged with a silken rope? <coughs> David Drake Brockman. Piers of the Realm. Correct, two points. The Duke of Kent was the father of the Empress of India. Who was she? <coughs> David Drake Brockman. Queen Victoria. Correct, two points. From which metal is the Victoria Cross made? <coughs> David Drake Brockman. Bronze. Correct, two points. Bronze is an alloy of tin and... Interrupted by Robert Copper. Taylor. Copper. Is the other metal copper correct two points? What is the chemical symbol for copper? <coughs> David Drake Brockman. See you. Correct. 50 seconds to go. I'll see you again is a song from Bittersweet. Who wrote it? <coughs> Ken Wilmshurst. Noel Coward. Correct two points. Noel Merlis, Michael Stout, <coughs> and John. Interrupted by Terry Carroll. Trainers of racehorses. Correct two points. Which racehorse spells murder when it goes backwards? <coughs> Robert Taylor. Red rum. Correct two points. What gives the colour to pink gin? David Drake Brockman. Angus Turner. Correct. Two points. 
Angus Jura Fetters. In which country will you find these places? <coughs> David Drake Brockman. Scotland. Correct two points. 20 seconds. What said Dr. Johnson is the noblest prospect ever seen by a Scotchman? <coughs> Ken Wilmshurst. The road to England. Right, the high road to England. Two points. Which England cricket captain was deposed last year by Mary... <coughs> interrupted by Terry Carroll? Quickly, must force you for an answer, come on. No, it was Rachel Hayhoe Flint. You lose two points. That's the buzzer, the end of the round and the contest, which means, looking at the scoreboard, that the winner of the 1978 Krypton Factor, with a Krypton Factor of 34 points, the ex-Olympic athlete from Oxshott, Surrey, Ken Wilmshurst. <laughs> Well, a great final and a terrific last round with Father David Drake Brockman coming through very fast to snatch second place. But a great overall performance by the ex-Olympic athlete Ken Wilmshurst and it's our warmest congratulations to him. <laughs> and you'll all notice in the top pocket there a little teddy bear which his daughter gave him just before the first heat in the contest and it's obviously brought him a lot of luck. <laughs> He's the 1978 Superman. We now bring back the 1977 Superperson, Harry Evans from Guildford, Surrey, to make the presentation, Harry. <laughs> well done, Ken. And if I can assemble your trophy, which I have. Well, <laughs> well done. Very well, very okay. well done indeed. So, okay. Ken Wilmshurst from Oxshott, Surrey, the 1978 Krypton Factor winner. That's all from us. Just time to say to you goodbye. Thank you for being with us through the series. We hope to be with you back next year. Until then, from us all, to all of you, good night and goodbye.